Thank you for the very kind invitation and uh, apologies that I couldn't join you in beautiful Switzerland. So role of bias in nutrition research. Uh, the short answer is uh, pretty easy. If we're talking about nutrition in general, probably 95% of that in bias. If we're talking about nutrition research, we would expect to do a bit better. But the typical recipe of nutrition research is necessarily uh, leading to a, a failure rate that is very close to the overall average person impression about nutrition. So mostly we're dealing with non-randomized designs with uh, impossible, very difficult to control confounding. Also many low quality, uh, small uh, trials. We have large measurement error. We have cherry picking among multiple hypotheses, post hoc analysis, selective reporting, uh, very lenient statistical tools, no registration, limited data sharing, very strong beliefs uh, driven by cultural, religious, personal views, and uh, what more. Lots of white hat bias. A lot of us uh, uh, really feel that we can save the world and our opinions might save the world. And finally, strong financial interest from big food uh, that may modulate the literature. Here's a systematic cookbook review that I published a few years ago. We used literally a cookbook, the Boston cookbook. It has been out there since the 19th century. We randomly checked 50 ingredients uh, from that cookbook and we asked how many of those have been assessed for association with increased or decreased cancer risk in the scientific literature. And the result is what you see here. 40 out of 50 had scientific studies associating them with cancer risk. The other 10 uh, didn't come up just because of our search strategy. So vanilla, uh, if you search for vanilla, we couldn't find any study. But if we had searched with vanillin, we could have found some studies associating it with either increased or decreased risk or, or both. Uh, in fact, for most of these foods and ingredients, there are studies claiming both increased and decreased risk with some exceptions. So for example, uh, bacon seems uh, to be always bad. Uh, but if you look at the relative risks in the bottom panel, they're really incompatible with logic. So I, I do believe that bacon probably does increase cancer risk, very, very uh, small increases possible. But if you take literally these relative risks that have been reported in scientific studies of two and seven and 10, they're incompatible with common sense. 